In this lecture, you are going to learn what are reactive forms in Angular and how to create and use a reactive form. So, we have learned that in Angular, there are two ways to create a form. One way is by using template driven form and another way is by using reactive forms. So, template driven forms are the simple basic forms and they are easy to start with. And template driven forms are based on HTML template. And we have already talked a lot about template driven form in our previous lectures. Now, reactive forms are the complex forms which provides us more control with the form. And the structure of the reactive form is defined in the TypeScript class. And we are going to see that in a bit. So, reactive forms are the forms where we define the structure of the form in the component class. That is, we create the form model with form groups, form controls and form arrays. We also define the validation rules in the component class. So, unlike template driven form, where we define the validation in the HTML, here we define the validation in the TypeScript class. Now, once we have defined the structure of the form in our TypeScript class, we also need to bind it to the HTML form in the template. Okay, so a reactive form is different from the template driven form, where we define the logic and controls in the HTML template itself. Let's see how to create and use a reactive form in Angular. Here, I have created a brand new project called Reactive Forms. And in this project, I have not done any changes. Now, remember that to work with Reactive Forms, we still need to use some HTML to define the form. And in order to save some time, I have already written that HTML. So, let's grab this HTML from here. And in our Angular project, let's go to this source folder. Let's expand this app folder. And here, we have this app component.html. So from here, let's remove this default HTML and CSS and let's paste the HTML which we have just copied. Then to design this form, here I have also written some CSS. So again, let's grab this CSS and let's paste it in app component.css file. Let's save the changes and let's go to the web page. So this is our form. This is how this form looks. Now let's do one more thing. Let's create a div and let's put this form inside that div or uh, here we already have this form inside a div with and the class of this div is form so let's go to app component.css and here we have this form class here let's also set the width and let's set the width to 420 pixel let's also set the margin so let's say top bottom 10 pixel and left right auto Okay, so this is the first step. We write some HTML to display the form. Now let's go ahead and let's define the reactive form. So here let's open app component class. And in the app component class, first let's create a property and let's call this property maybe reactive form. You can call this property anything. But the type of this property should be form group. And to use this form group, we also need to import it from angular slash forms. Okay, now here we have this error because we have not initialized this property with any value. So what I'm going to do is let's open tsconfig.json here and let's set this strict rule to false. Save the changes and that error should be gone. Now, since we are going to create a reactive form, let's go to app modules here. And here, in this import array, we need to import reactive forms module. Okay, so when we work with template driven form, there we import forms module. But here, we need to import reactive forms module. And again, this reactive forms module will be imported from angular slash forms. Alright, let's close this file. And now, we need to set up our form. So for that, Let's first define ng on init method here. Okay, and to use this ng on init, let's also implement it from on init interface. And to use this on init interface, we also need to import it from angular slash go. Now, inside this ng on init method, the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to instantiate this form group. Okay, so here let's say this dot reactive form. So this reactive form is the property which we have created here equals new 
form group. Okay, and this form group constructor takes a JavaScript object as its argument. So in this way, we have created our form. Now we need to set up our form controls. And we can set up the controls using key value pair. So in this form, here we have this first name, last name, email, country, gender, and hobbies property. So for each of these controls, here we need to create a JavaScript property. So let's call it first name. So this is the property name. And to this property, we need to assign a value. And the value should be of type form control. Okay, so here we need an instance of form control. And to use this form control, we also need to import it from Angular slash forms. And to this constructor, we can pass some value which will be set as the default value for that control. But for now, let's simply pass null here. And in the same way, let's also create properties for last name, email, gender, country, and hobbies. Okay, so here using this form group, we created a form and using this form control, we have created form controls. Now we need to connect this form with our HTML form. To do that, on this form, we need to use a directive called form group. And we also need to wrap it within square brackets. And to this, we need to assign a value. And that value should be this property, this reactive form property. Let's copy this and let's specify it here. All right. Now, in case of template driven form, on the form controls, we use the name attribute, right? And then we specified some name for that input element. But here we need to use form control name. Okay, so this is the directive and to this directive, we need to assign the form control. So here we have created these form controls. So we want to bind this input element with this first name property. So let's copy this name and let's assign it to this form control name directive. In the same way, let's use this form control name directive on other form controls. Okay, so let's use this on this last name. Let's go ahead and use it on this email input element. Then on this country, on these gender input elements. And let's also use it on this hobbies input element. So here the property name is hobbies. Let's copy this and let's use it here. Let's add it on other two checkbox inputs. Okay, so in this way, we have connected this form using this form group with this form group, this reactive form. And we have also connected these form controls using this form control name directive with these form controls which we have created in our TypeScript class. Let's now go to the web page. And so this is the form which we have created using reactive form approach. Now, if you want to set some default value for let's say country and gender, you can do that by passing some value to these form control constructors. So for example, for this gender, I want to set the default gender as male. So here, let's go to this HTML and here for the male, the value is male. So let's copy this and let's pass it here. In the same way, for this country, let's say I want to set India as the default country for that. Okay, so India, we don't have that in option here. Let me create that option. So I'll copy this. I will paste it here. Let's remove this selected from here. Okay, and let's provide a value as India and the display should be India. Let's copy this value and let's go ahead and let's pass it to this form control constructor. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and you will notice that here mail and for the country India is selected by default. 
In the same way, you can also set some predefined values for this first name, last name and email. But I'm not going to do that. Now, let's say when the user clicks on this submit button, we want to do something. So for that, in the template driven form, on this form element, we used ng submit, right? And the same thing we can also do here. So here we can use ng submit. And to this ng submit, we can assign a method. Let's call that method on submit. And let's go ahead and let's define this method. So let me copy this method. Let's go to app component class. And here after ng on init, let's define this method. Now for this method in the template driven form, we were also specifying a local reference variable on this form element. And then we were passing that local reference to this on submit method, or we were accessing that local reference using view child decorator. But here we don't need to use any local reference variable because here we already have the form inside this reactive form property. Okay, so here let's go ahead and let's log this reactive form property and let's see what it holds. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me open developer console. Let's clear everything here and let's click on this submit button. So you will notice that an object of type form group has been logged here. And if I expand this object, this object looks almost similar to the ng form object. So it also has this dirty property, which is currently set to false. It also has this valid property, which is set to true because on this form, we have not added any validation yet. Then it also has this invalid property. It should have this touched and untouched property. Okay. So in this lecture, we learned how to create a reactive form. Now, if you have any questions or any doubts from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. This is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, we will learn how to do validation of a reactive form. Thank you for listening and have a great day.